Doug Bangham. Uh, but they called me Kid Bangham. You know, I have two names. I was the youngest in my first band uh, in 1980. Everybody else was much older. So uh, I had a an embarrassing name for the band. Uh, Doug was just not a very cool name, I agree with So they all, they had all changed their names so that they could come up more African American. It was, it was a blues band. And I was Doug, this, you know. So they said, this will never do. So they, uh, the drummer, Steve Brown, named me Kid Bang. In anger, he said, I'm not calling, I'm not going to introduce you as Doug Bang. He stomped away. He said, you're a kid, and stomped away. I had known a lot of the players. Uh, it's like one, one giant network, <clears throat> all the way from New England to uh, all over the country. And uh, I ended up being picked up by them because uh, Jimmy Vaughn left the band. And uh, they needed players to replace him, and I was one of the candidates. So. I think my favorite moments would be getting to, to, to be friends with all these people that I idolized. Yes, yes I had an idea. Let's talk about B.B. King. Here I am on the road with B.B. King, and he has autographed it. Um, I did not steal this baby. That is my daughter, Megan. On the road, together. B.B. Uh, King, he was uh, from touring in the Thunderbirds, and I met him, I think, with the Blue Tones, too, uh, before the Thunder Thunderbirds. Um, just a fantastic guy, you know, just down to earth, neat, neat guy. Um, passionate about music, I mean, he was, he'd be in his bus listening to music. Like he was 12 years old, and excited about some new artist. You know, it was always fun to, to see that. Um, always learning, uh, and just a nice guy, really nice guy. I don't know, but what can you say about BB King? I mean, he's you know, so influential, influential to all of us. It was fun meeting Anna James. Uh, she made a crack into the microphone about me. I didn't have time to do my hair. So I just slicked it back with like this, like this some kind of acrylic. <laughs> and uh, short notice, I got called to, to help him out at night stage at Cambridge. So I got down there, I had my hair that like, looked like a giant, like a bullet, you know. And so she, she, she announced to the audience that Pee Wee Herman was playing guitar today. And then I made a crack about her being on Oprah Winfrey, and uh, she didn't think that was funny. Don't tell that story on this documentary. The, uh, you would think the moments would be, uh, you know, crowd adulation, things like that. I never got into that stuff. I was never, I was never fooled by the crowd. I never really took them seriously. I mean, I don't mean in a, that way. I mean, I didn't, I didn't take the whole thing as real, you know, because uh, it's not, it's not, it's not rational, it, people are in an audience, they're just, they're treating you a certain way, it's got nothing to do with reality, really, so, I didn't get carried away with that, um, so, I had no great moments that way, I had great moments on stage, personally, connecting with people was, was, was intense, those were great moments, you know, to, Connect with people musically. You know, it's a really intimate, neat thing. It's a great way to relate to people. Uh, uh, great moments of doing that. It's like you're an astronaut when you're when you're in that life. You're, you're, you're an astronaut, and you can't live like that. It, it's not a recipe for for longevity at all. But, uh, uh, I knew that I couldn't. Uh, stay in that in that life you know uh, I could tell that, that the uh, the world was changing the whole scene was changing uh, like right now people don't on weekends they don't go out and go see bands 
to go to clubs. When I was back in the 80s, that's what people did. That's what they did every weekend. You went to the club. So the whole scene was thriving, but I could see that it was starting to change. And it, it, I was right, it did change. It's, it's almost gone. So um, I could see that. I knew I had to do something besides a uh, live performer. You know, so I just said, well, why, why wait? Why, why wait 10 years for it to happen? I'll just cut out now and then rebuild my life in other ways. It's a, primarily a music instruction uh, facility, live performance capability. Uh, but it ends up being so much more than just those things. I mean, uh, people's, you know, so much happens here that's not musical. But it's it's a music place. I kind of started it in anger. You know, I, I didn't think that the conventional music instruction system uh, that everybody is subjected to was a good one. Uh, and, uh, you know, without going into detail, so I. I so I, as an experiment, started a school that would do the opposite of what every other school would do. And uh, which is to teach people as fast as possible, and as slowly as possible. And uh, it's just been a fantastic experience. Just really, really great. We, we never talked about it in our lessons and things like that, but, but uh, fantastic. 15, it's been 15 years now. It's just the greatest life. Even even better than I think touring and and, uh, and uh, being a rock and roller, uh, I would say I've been the happiest I've ever been in the last 15 years. Good to school and, and what it's done. Drawn to music, a very early age. Um, but I think really, when you look at the whole picture, um, I, I I wanted to be free. I, I, I recall myself always trying to escape everything and everybody, so I just wanted to remain free. And uh, so music became a way to do that, that's all. So I could just go off and do my own thing, whatever that, those things were, <clears throat> and not be, uh, you know, not be captured by all the people who were going to take all your time and your freedom away. So music just became a way for me to do that. So I, Music became very important for that reason, but in the process, I did end up loving music. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, like we're, you know, we're the freest country, you know. But how how many of us are really free? You know? What do you think? We have a cigar box. It's yours. After a long, hard day of work with the kids, I'm just exhausted. The funny thing about it is it's made to plug in. 